Good afternoon. Today I have Caroline England with me. Hiya Caroline, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, I'm, well, as you say, Caroline England, um, but I'm also, I sort of wear three author hats. So my main author name is Caroline England. And then I also have um, some legal drama series. And my name for those is Caro Land. If you see what I'm doing there, beginning and end, <laughs> the, clue, the clue's in the name. And then I'm also, uh, I also write as C-E, again, a clue, Rose. And um, I've got the first of those books out. It's psychological thriller, which all my books are, but it's got a bit of a gothic hint to it. Um, so the first one of that was, one was out in April, The House of Hidden Secrets, and there's going to be the paperback out in August and another ebook out in August called The House on the Water's Edge. So I'm doing a bit of a house thing at the moment with my C.E. Rose books. Um, but going back to uh, Caroline England, uh, that's my main writing name, and I write um, psychological thrillers, stroke, domestic noir, because a lot of people go, well, are they actually thrillers? But I think psychological, when it the, the psychological goes ahead of the thriller, you know what you're in. It's more to do with mind games, isn't it? And that type of thing, as well as some crime. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, did you always want to be a writer? Um, hmm, that's an interesting one. I, I guess I thought, I mean, I'd have loved to have been a writer when I was younger, but uh, I guess I thought um, I could never do that because it's it's just seems an astonishing thing to be able to write a whole novel and um, so I actually um, went to uni and did law at university and then I carried on the sort of law path a bit blinkered and I became a solicitor and uh, but that was sort of writing as it happens because um, and it was creative writing too because um, I started off doing um, crime and um, so it, it involved a lot of pleas of mitigation and you had to be a bit creative, you know, when naughty criminals had done thing and you were explaining why and how, you know, they ought to be treated kindly. Uh, and then I went on to do, I don't know why, I must've been crazy, but I went on to do divorce work, <laughs> which was a bit of a shocker for someone who's in their early twenties, because the things that go on behind closed doors, um, and of course that involved divorce petitions and um, if you had to get um, over the hurdle of an unreasonable behaviour petition in those days, you had to again be quite creative. I mean you didn't make it up obviously, but you know, <laughs> it, it was creative writing. Um, so even when I was doing the law I was sort of doing creative writing as, in a way and it wasn't until I had my girls that I took a career break and that's when I started thinking you know I started with short stories and poems rubbishy poems absolute rubbish um and then I thought well if you can do a short story a novel's only a very very long short story isn't it sort of so that's how I got into it all yeah <laughs> and what made you choose um, psychological thrillers is that just what came out when you started typing um, well, it was a bit of a shocker, actually, because um, my first book, my debut was called Beneath the Skin, and it's over there, my, my product placement, um, and, um, and it was wonderful because I got um, an offer from HarperCollins, and, um, and I, I had the ed editor, Phoebe Morgan, who's an author herself, and, um, and she said, um, right, excellent, you know, great book you better get off to, um, you know, get involved with crime fiction writers and go to the crime writing festivals and whatnot. And I sort of went, why? I didn't realise I was writing crime fiction or psychological <laughs> thrillers. I mean, I suppose I do kill off the odd person or there might be the cr a few crimes in there. But I, I guess I, I, what I wrote was what I like to read and it was sort of a combination of um, contemporary fiction uh, and crime fiction, because they're the two things I like to read. So I suppose what I was doing is a combination of the two, which I guess is what psychological thrillers are, aren't they? Because they're about real lives, domestic situations and secrets and lies and everything, but also the crime element. So it's that blend. I must have just fallen into it, really. <laughs> and I do like to read psychological thrillers, so yeah. It sounds like you love it as well, so it was obviously not a bad move. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Once <laughs> over the shock of being a criminal, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are 
if you were to be placed in any of your books as a character, which one would you like to be in? Oh, that's a tricky one because um, I, t I tend to put my characters uh, through the wrangle, so I make life quite difficult for them. So probably none of them actually. <laughs> um, but, but for example, my, my latest book, which is out today, Truth Games, um, would I, the, the main character in this, and it's from her point of view, is Ellie, Ellie Wilson. Would I want to be in her shoes? Mm -mm. No way, but she's, she's good because she, 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 she travels a journey in it and, um, and she has to strip back lots of layers of secrets and lies and everything. So um, I think she does become a stronger person through the story. Um, but I think the truth is fairly devastating when it comes. So uh, in this book, I think I'd rather be her hubby. Well, he isn't even a hubby. He's her partner, Cameron, because he's a happy-go-lucky sort of character who just, he will always pick himself up and dust himself off. So maybe I'd be better being him. <laughs> um, or maybe I prefer to be uh, the handsome Sean Walsh, who's got a really nice beard, a nice dark beard. I mean, who wouldn't want a nice dark beard <laughs> and lovely green eyes? Oh, yeah, see, now I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's Irish as well, so. <laughs> Bold. I love an accent. Absolutely. And I always think that's the right question, the right answer to that question when I ask, especially crime writers, if they'd want to be in their own books, the answer should be no, absolutely not, because, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> but generally they give me an answer. I'm like, okay, you're weird, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or they could be the dead body, couldn't they? Ooh, yeah. Which, you know, that's not, you know, that's weird, but, you know, <laughs> I think crime writers are weird, which is why they're such a good bunch. And I'm sure you know from talking to them, they're such a lovely group of people. And it's probably because they're all bonkers. Yeah, that's what I said to Malcolm when I spoke to him earlier. Uh, he asked what I'd found out about authors. Like, well, you're all lovely and also your quivering messes of insecurity. And it's like, yeah, pretty much that nails it. I know. I, know. Yeah. I think it's true, especially the insecurity bit. Uh, you sort of, I think you swing as a writer. I don't, well, I don't know if everyone's as bad as me, but from going, actually, this is really good for about three seconds to, oh God, it's rubbish. Everyone will hate it. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. Perfectly normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Um, I'll be all right. Can you write me a prescription? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what it would be, but sure, I'll write something for you. Just say, keep going. You've got this. You're ace. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, what's the most interesting thing you found while doing research for your books? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I'm quite a lazy person, so I don't, I don't do a lot of research. I mean, I couldn't do historical fiction. You know, these people have to go and, into the archives, they have to make sure it's factually correct, etc. cetera. Um, so I really admire them because it, that looks like really hard work and it takes some years, doesn't it, to do all the research and the... Whereas I do um, not a lot. I do research something. So a lot of my characters might say have mental health issues. And I think that's really important to get right. So I'll do a lot of research on the internet and whatnot. Um, so things like that, or, um, but I think my stories are very much to do with it. They're very character based. And so I suppose I'm a human being, I hope. So I hope a lot of that stuff I'm feeding in I, that comes from within me, or at least you can empathise and sit in someone else's shoes. Um, but like all authors, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, that if people looked at our search history, we'd be arrested. You know, the things, the things you do, the odd things you look up, you know, quietly and hope that no one's looking sort of thing. But of course, we, when we're up in, in court, we've got an excuse, haven't we? We'll go, oh, it was for research. Yeah. And then we'll see this, this thing, they'll go, but Caroline, you don't do research. Like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm afraid this goes on YouTube and everything as well, so it's not going to be hidden away in oh, some no. quiet corner of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've gone and done it now. Yeah. yeah, you just have to, I don't know, be, be more clever with your uh, dodgy research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, do you hide any secret jokes or messages in your books? Um... Sometimes, yes, you do it like, we, we, you know, friends are going to read it. Like um, you might mention things like we, we've got a friend called Andy 
and um, he's always going, please put me in your book, please put me in the book. So I, I try and feed in Andy whenever I can. Uh, and um, and he doesn't mind what he is or who, who he is, as you know. Um, so, so that's one thing um, you do. And all, the other thing is you get a little bit of revenge occasionally. So um, I work for someone who wasn't very nice and I can't mention which book it's in there, but she sort of appears and um, just in little ways as well, you know, if someone's slightly annoyed, you just feed it through, but it's all good stuff. I mean, it's all in good spirits mainly, but uh, yeah, because sometimes um, I'm sure you've heard that barristers do that in cases. So they'll work up in court and they'll have bets between barristers where they've got to feed in a certain phrase or word. <laughs> and, uh, and so they have to feed it through. But um, a couple of them got found out at one stage and they got reprimanded because obviously they were, it was obvious they were feeding in and all their submissions to the judge. This, you know, so yeah, naughty. <laughs> But yeah, it is, it's good It's good to have, I suppose it's a bit like playing God, isn't it? A bit being an author, because you can feed stuff in. As long as you don't get sued, we don't want that. Yeah, you know, that'd, be bad, that'd be a bad move. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. But I mean, if you're not naming people directly, then I don't see how. No. And obviously they always put in the disclaimer, you know, that they say this isn't, uh, you know, any true person. And it isn't really. It's always a tiny little bit of... It, we're like magpies, aren't we, authors? We steal a little bit there and a little bit here and put a lot of ourselves in as well. So we'd be suing ourselves, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, anyone try and do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, that's me, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you have more trouble naming characters or choosing titles for your books? Um. Well, I, I'm rubbish at naming characters. It's like if, if I have a sort of minor character who's an older guy, I always call him Henry. I've no idea why. So all these Henrys appear because it's not, a, you know, it's just like someone's granddad or something like that. And he always gets called Henry and I've no idea why. But I need to stop that and stop. <laughs> uh, but I'm a bit I'm a bit boring. And in fact, just next to me here, I've got a bookcase and often I look. But I've, I've got I've used Ian because I've got so many Ian ranking books down there. <laughs> I can't use Ian again. I've used him, you know, and Mark Billingham. I can't use Mark again. So, you know, it's all these, uh, and, and Val, you know. Um, but yeah, so I'm not very, I'm trying to get more inventive with names. But of course, what one could do is just put in an X or just Joe or Sam or something, and then change it at the end. Um, and so I'm starting to do that. And I quite like to do that. I quite like to use a name and then, because you just go to edit, don't you? And then you just put, and the whole script has a whole new meaning, a whole new name. <laughs> and also book titles, I think they're quite hard too. Uh, but as you know, many publishers change them anyway. So there's no point fretting, is there too much? No, so, definitely not. <laughs> I did I did get, in fairness, this was my title, Truth Games. So they kept that. Um, my first book, Beneath the Skin, they kept that as well. Um, but the others have all been changed. So. <laughs> what's your um one word that you're constantly overusing oh um there are so many <laughs> where, where do I begin I, I found when I go back to an old manuscript I'm often saying they paused for a moment they pause for a moment a lot in my books and it's <laughs> funny how you start to get to see your ticks um and um but sometimes you need that distance where you realize that you you've used the same thing yeah, it's funny how you have certain words. I'm trying to work on that, but we all do it, don't we? Same, same word, yeah. Yeah, I saw someone else um, say the other day that their character shrugged an awful lot. <laughs> yeah, shrugging a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And but it's it's hard, isn't it? Because there are only certain things that human beings do, and you need to you need to link things up. You know, don't the little bits. Um, yeah, but it's hard to be too inventive because then that, that annoys readers just as much if you get too inventive or too detailed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I totally forgot what I was going to ask you then. Do you have oh, lots sorry, of author sorry. friends? That's all right. <laughs> I always get distracted. <laughs> um, do you have lots of author friends? Yes, yes, I do. Um, it's been brilliant because, as I said, all those years ago when Phoebe said, go to the Crime Writers Festival, um, I met my sort of um, three besties, so to speak, at the first one, and it was um, um, Crime Fest in Bristol. 
So I met Sam Carrington and Amanda Robson and Libby Carpenter. And we stayed really good friends ever since. And they're lovely because they're so supportive and um, two are still uh, published by HarperCollins and two of us have moved away sort of thing. But it's great. It's so because you need that support. So they're my sort of little group of um, psychological thriller mates. And um, then, of course, um, I've got friends from my writing group um, and it's literally my writing group. When, when we used to go to the actual writing group is literally over the road. So I've got there a bunch of lovely writer friends. And then, of course, you just meet people on the way, both online and at festivals and stuff. And they're a really nice bunch of people, you know, really good. Yeah. And there doesn't seem to be um, the, the competitiveness that you'd imagine sort of thing. Everyone seems to really support each other and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I've noticed that. And I hear that a lot, actually, which is really nice. And I've found that myself. So, yeah. Yeah. And do you get much feedback from your readers? Um, not, not that much, because I'd quite well, I was going, people get, I don't even mind if it's negative feedback, because you learn from it, don't you? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, you get feedback in reviews in a way, don't you? And uh, the one stars are devastating to begin with, but I'm getting hardened now. Now I sort of try and see the funny side of them. It's like in um, My Husband's Lies, someone gave it a one star and they said it was something like, um, or something to, to like a cesspit of um, you know vulgarity or something like that. You know, something. But I thought great. You know, what well, whatever it was was like. Well, you know, if you tell people it's like a bit naughty to read, then it's a good. Thing, you know, surely. Um, but occasionally I get like the other day I got an email from um, a lady in Canada giving me some feedback about a book, um, and it was really lovely. And now she keeps corresponding with me and telling me about a family tree and stuff so it's, it's really fascinating all these because she's in Canada but she's got all these British relatives and whatnot so I think I've made a new friend there and uh, but generally speaking I don't get that many actual emails so out there people if you want to if you want a friend I'm happy to <laughs> I'm happy to get your emails and see what you think about my books and uh, yeah so go for it that's what I try and tell people in my group especially, and I spoke to an author yesterday and he said, let me know what you think of my book. I'm like, I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> I always oh. tell you. And he's like, oh yeah, good point. <laughs> but yeah, I do try and tell other people that authors don't mind. They want to hear from you. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah no, that's yeah. true. It's true, definitely, yeah. <laughs> What's been your favourite moment being an author so far? Um, oh, 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 that's a tricky one. Um, I think it was just that that first um, when because what happened with my first offer, it was going to be just a download only. And then halfway through the whole procedure, it, it, it they said, no, we're going to put it in paperback as well. I think that was the moment I was just so, because my ambition was always to see my own book on the bookcase. And so that was. I think now, I think because that was about, what, three, four years ago now. And I think ebooks are so much more, um, you know, people just have them and obviously through lockdown and whatnot but at the time it was really really I just wanted a paperback so that was a real high and um and just um I think it's what you were saying before about um authors insecurity and whatnot I just whenever I get a good review I do a little dance I just love it I can't I can't laugh in a phrase <laughs> it's, it's I'm a saddo it says a lot about me doesn't it but I need praise but uh, yeah but it is that's a delight it's lovely to think some and when someone um not only gives you a really good review but they've got it exactly what you wanted to convey and what was in your head they've absolutely got it it's like yes wow it's just brilliant yeah so you said your um, all you wanted to see was your book on a bookshelf. So now that you've done that, what's your dream? To see more books on bookshelves. You get greedy, don't you? That's the trouble. You tick off something. We all do it, don't we, in life? You've got an ambition. You tick it off and then you want the next bit and the next bit. And it's it's dreadful, really. So, but, but I'd love to carry on publishing my books because um, I'll have, um, by the end of this year, I'll have eight out. And, uh, and that's sort of in the last three, four years, but I'd like to carry on, please, and um, carry on writing and carry on seeing them published. And that is such an honor. And I'm really, really grateful that I've got that because it's so hard. There are so many people who want to be published. Um, but yes, that's my ambition. I want to carry on doing that, please. <laughs> 
do you have any phobias and would you write about them? Well, it's funny enough, um, this show that the, the, everyone truth games again. No, you know, people normally say, um, oh, what, what started your book and where did it begin? And I was trying to think because a lot of my books do have, I can remember what the spark was and uh, or they're slightly autobiographical. And for this one, I was thinking, what, what was it? What was it? Anyway, I remembered last night in the night because um, the character Ellie in this has sort of night terrors and uh, that sort of thing and last night when I had a bit of a night terror I thought that's it <laughs> so yeah I, I have straight I have sometimes not all the time sometimes I have strange um dreams and um you wake up from one layer of the dream into another dream so it's a bit spooky because you think you've woken up but you haven't you're still in the second dream if you like and sometimes my character Ellie has them so I have it's very top a good question, very topical. So that from that point of view, uh, but I don't think I have any phobias like um, spiders or snakes or, I mean, I certainly, I certainly wouldn't want to be, oh, I'm not very good with heights. So I, I suppose I could write about someone locking me in a tower and, you know, <laughs> or vertigo. I could do a Hitchcock, couldn't I? Vertigo at the top. <laughs> I think I'm okay with heights until I'm up high and I'm like, <laughs> it's hard. It's when your legs go wobbly and it's just not nice. <laughs> <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> um, would you like to see your books made into TV series or films? Yes. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone who says no to that one. But uh, yeah, I had um, I had a near uh, a sort of near miss with um, Betray Her, this one, a nice pink one. And um, this is my last one that came out, but it came out in lockdown last year. So it sort of got a bit lost, um, which is a shame. Um, but um, I did have, I don't know if you've ever heard of the actress, Catherine Hagel. She was in 27 Dresses. She's a Hollywood actress and she was in Grey's Anatomy and a lot of rom-coms and whatnot. And um, she got in touch with my agent and said, oh, wow, you know, I'd love to do this, put it in a, min a mini series. Well, it never happened, which is sad, but I did have a half hour telephone conversation with her, sat here, and I thought, was that every day? You talk to a Hollywood actress for half an hour and she was gushing. So I thought, I should have taped it, shouldn't I? I should have taped the phone call. <laughs> so that, that was a near miss, but I, I would, yeah, I'd really love that. So, but I think most authors would. And, but then again, some authors um, do go down that route, don't they? They're lucky enough to get an option and then it becomes reality. And um, they're not happy with it, are they? Because they've, the, the, the screenwriter has rewritten the whole thing and they've got characters who don't look like what, the, you know. So, although I'd like to be in that position to be annoyed. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> If you were able to spend a day with any author, dead or alive, who would you like to spend a day with? Ooh, tricky one again. Um, ooh, it's difficult. Well, the other day, um, I actually did a sort of interview with Mark Billingham, and um, and he was the easiest, funniest, nicest guy. And I thought, well, you know, it was great. I didn't really have to do anything because he was just he, he's a jokes and his quips and he's so personable and he's funny so I think he'd be a really good guy to go for a meal with you know have a drink with or whatever yeah because he'd, he'd, he'd be funny you know so that'd be good <laughs> yeah I've interviewed him as well and he is great fun and so modest as well yeah you know he's done so much and it, you know he just talks to famous people he's just friends with some comedians but it you know he doesn't make a big thing of it is great it really is yeah. and it's mostly talented as well because I didn't know till I was doing my research that he was an actor and that he did some screenwriting and all sorts of things before he started doing his thorn books amazing I know some, some people, people are annoying are. they're so talented I know. <laughs> I know and you know when they're funny and they're nice and they're modest it's like oh really <laughs> it's just so unfair well, would you I'm turning the tables here. Have you got someone that you would choose? Or is that that's too difficult, I bet, for you? Um, I mean, I'd love to meet so many authors that I've interviewed, but it would be Stephen King. There's no uh, question. Yeah. Massive yeah. Stephen King fan. So, yeah. yeah. It, 
and there'd be yeah. like, I mean, he's but he's so he's so prolific in so many films, etc. He'd be fascinating, wouldn't he? I don't think I've ever seen him in an interview though. He's um I've seen him in a few and he's actually really funny and he's quite open. So yeah, um he done one with Lee Child recently and that was quite interesting. And they're both big fans of each other. So oh, really? he, you know, Stephen King's you're probably one of the most well-known writers, and I suppose Lee Child is now, but to see them gushing about each other's books was really funny. It was like oh. just really odd, but yeah, it was it was good. And he was a drug addict and he had an accident and stuff. So yeah, I think it would be really interesting to. to well, Stephen's heard it here. Donna wants to interview you, Stephen. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I have actually contacted him, but nothing. So well, I you wait never know. You never yeah. know. <laughs> and who would be the author that you would fangirl over most if you were to meet them? I tell you who I'd, I'd fangirl over a lot would be Kate Atkinson. Because I think she she comes across so nicely when I heard her on Desert Island Dis and she was very modest and said, oh, you know, she was like failing things and da 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 da. And um, but I like her contemporary fiction, but then she went into crime fiction, which I thought was really good because some contemporary writers don't like genre fiction, you know, some um, literary, sorry, literary writers sort of think genre fiction sort of like a bit below, but I don't know why that should be the case. And she obviously did her Jackson Brody books, which I thought were great, although I've not read the latest one yet. And um, and she it just showed that it can be done. You can still be literary and write really, like all the crime writers write brilliant stuff. It doesn't mean it's any, you know, so, but I think um, she'd be really interesting to chat to. And also to say, what did you think, you know, of Jason Isaacs as uh, Jackson Brody? I thought he was great. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously she'd have to bring Jason as well. You know, so I'd have to talk to them both. Of course, yeah, that's that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, what are the best books you've read recently, and what's the last book that made you cry? Uh, what I'm, well, I, what I'm reading at the moment is um, the Dinner Guest by B. B I can't say B. P. Walters. I've just started that, and I'm just completely already thinking I love this I love the way he writes it I love the characters so that's a, and that, I must admit sort of during lockdown I've had a bit of a sort of my reading mojo's gone I just it's it should have been a time when the, there was time to read but weird um and a book that made me cry um <laughs> this is a real sad note. I sometimes cry at my own books when I'm writing a sad scene I don't exactly cry but I do get a bit and I was listening to um my Husband's Lies on audio, which is, I know it's its awful, isn't it? But, um, but I, I was walking and it was something to listen to as, you know, walking during lockdown. And um, and I got quite teary and I thought, this is really embarrassing. Not only am I listening to my own <laughs> book, I'm actually getting emotional. <laughs> so yeah, you've got me down as a complete nutter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. She's going, no, yes. <laughs> So what do you like to do when you're not writing? Uh, well, now I've discovered the walking. I really enjoy it. So now, because my daughter's gone, oh, mum, God, you know, just listen to some music or something when you're walking. And I used to be like, no, one enjoys the countryside when you're walking. So, but I started listening to stuff and um, I've discovered BBC Sounds and the, uh, the, the podcasts and whatnot. And um, in particular, I've been listening to... Um, famous songs uh you know over the years so they might have been fairly recent or years ago and the history of them and people talking about them I'm completely addicted so that plus the walking uh that's my new hobby so I like doing that but I don't like leaning so if anyone does sense. I think they're weird so anyway yeah. it's yeah. just one of those things that has to be done <laughs> Well, you look, it looks very clean in your house. You look, I love your colours, everything nice and pale. It's, yeah, it's my mum's house and she's OCD. It's like a show home. I'm not allowed anything out of place, so <laughs> I make sure that's <laughs> the case. Training. Yeah. <laughs> um, who was your first celebrity crush? Um, I think it was probably Donny Osmond. <laughs> That's embarrassing, and I'm showing how old I am now. But yes, and I used to, I used to, and I think this is where my writing really began. It began with Donny, because I used to um, 
I go to bed at night and um, make up a story, a Donny story. And, uh, you know, he'd be the, the obviously the love in the story. And usually I'd be a nurse and he'd be, Donny would be in a coma very sadly, but he'd wake up from the coma. And who would he see the first? There would I be, and he'd obviously fall in love with me, you know. So, I mean, I was very young at the time, but yeah, that's so I ought to go. But then after that, you know, as, as time went on, I got a bit more cool, you know. I didn't, you know, it was more like your Paul Simonon from The Clash, or, you know, rather than anyway. <laughs> very on. common. Very common answer, either Donny Osmond or David Casty. I've heard that so many times. So you're totally not on your own. <laughs> but there were quite a few sort of hunks at the end, like David Essex at that time. I mean, this is before you would even a twinkle in your mum's eye, I'm sure. But <laughs> I know who David Essex is <laughs> as well. My mum's seen him actually. Uh, she mentions his blue eyes frequently. So yep, I have grown up knowing exactly who David Essex is. <laughs> And then, then, oh, I thought, and there's the Bay City Rollers as well. But Les sadly died recently, didn't he? So I bet he, Les gets a mention as well. Yep, yeah, uh, also come up as well. So, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, they just ruled every teenage girl's dreams back then. It was quite funny. <laughs> um, Post lockdown, you're able to go to one concert, visit one country, and then go to any other event. What would you choose to do? Oh goodness, these are really tricky questions. So, so, so take let's take it one by one. See, I'm rubbish. My daughter will go. Oh, Mum cannot come to a final decision about anything. So, what what <laughs> I got to say? Um, you can go to a concert, right? A country, and then any other event. Well, I think a concert. I'd go to the Stereophonics because I think they're so brilliant, and I've been a few times before. And uh, or, or Oasis, but obviously they've split up, so I can't have Oasis anymore. Can, unless they get back together, which isn't looking good, is it? <laughs> um, so yeah, Stereophonics, because I think Kelly Jones and it is got such a fabulous voice and they're such a you know brilliant. So that's that one. Then what was country. next? Country. <laughs> country. Um, where would I like to go? Uh, well, anywhere, anywhere warm. Mind you, it's been warm here. Can't complain. Yeah, no, I'd have to think about that for three years, the country. So I'll come <laughs> back to you in three years and let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, any other event, any, like a sporting event or um, just anything? Well, hopefully um, crime writing festivals because they're such fun. I mean, I know Harrogate is, a, 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 you know, hopefully a go. Um, but, um, but I don't know how weird it might be still, because it's sort of early days, isn't it? So I think, um, yeah, so hopefully next year, um, Crime Fest in Bristol, that could be great. Because everyone, it's so nice to see everyone and uh, hang about the bar, etc. yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that and many hugs. <laughs> are you, are you do go to the crime writing festivals or? I haven't been to any, I've only, um, really sort of been involved in an online community for maybe just over a year. Um, I've always read, always, but I didn't think to look on Facebook for groups. And then as soon as I found them, then that was it, I was in. But yeah, so I've um, obviously wanted to go to Harrogate and then it was cancelled. So yes, as soon as I'm able, I will aim to go to any, all of them if I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're all miles away from me. Harrogate's like four hours and Bristol. Well, yeah. At least Crime Fest is a bit closer, isn't it? Bristol's a little bit. Is it easier or not really? Uh, not massively, I don't think. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> you can tell that geography, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's kind of that way rather than, I don't know. Yeah. But there is a maybe. London one as well, isn't there? Is it, what's it, Capital Crime? If that, that comes up maybe later this year or maybe next year. Yeah, yeah, I've, um, I think that's next year. I think I've kept an eye on that to make sure um, I don't miss any news, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my dog's awake again. <laughs> um, so are you working on anything at the moment and what's coming next for you? Um, well, what's coming next is um, my next CE Rose book, because that will be out in the, the one that's called The House on the Water's Edge. That will be out in ebook in um, August. So that's the next sort of publication, if you like. And then um, 
hopefully this time next year there'll be another one from Little Brown, you know, that after you know my Caroline England name. Um, and in the meantime, I've sort of gone back to um, an old manuscript, and um, so because it was publication day was coming up for Truth Games, so I thought I don't want to start anything new. So I thought I'll go back and and what you said before about you know ticks in writing and, and word you overuse and everything's like ah. <laughs> so it's and I think in many ways it's harder to amend what you've already written than start afresh in a way. But obviously that the story's there, so I want to. I, I don't like waste either. So if I can polish it up, so that's what I'm doing. But I'd like to in due course start something brand new, and I don't really know what it is yet. So that would be nice. <laughs> I think you need a clear sort of headspace to start something completely new. So while it's all, everything else is buzzing along, I'll just carry on with that one. I'm, that's driving me nuts. But yeah, I'm getting there. Though. <laughs> I'm about halfway through now and it's like incredibly hard work. But, you know, I thought it'd be easy. I thought, oh, read through it. Yes. But no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I have any more questions for you unless you think I, there's anything I haven't asked that you want to tell us. Um, no, not really. Just to say, again, it's Truth Came with Publication Day. And this is the, I mean, we, we had the, the larger size out in the ebook, and this is finally the UK paperback book. And um, so it'd be lovely if anyone was interested in a, a psychological thriller, secrets and lies. And um, it starts with the truth game. So it's true to its title. And uh, but that's 18 years ago, a drunken truth game at university. So we start there and then we go into the present day and we see how all those confessions and those deep, dark secrets start to impact everyone's lives. Brilliant. And would you like to tell everyone where they can find out more about you and where they can buy your books from? Yeah, so I've got a website um, which is www.carolineenglandauthor co.uk so that's quite straightforward caroline england author.co.uk um and i'm on twitter on twitter i'm um at kaz england and then i'm on instagram and facebook i have a, an author page but both of those are at caroline uh, kaz england one because someone had stolen the the, the kaz england first so it's <laughs> all a bit confusing i'm either kaz england or i have a one on the end and um, and then obviously the, the books, um, you can obviously get them on Amazon or in all your local bookshops. If they don't stock it, I mean, for, fortunately, a few local bookshops around here like Waterstones are stocking truth games. Uh, but if you can't, you just order them through any good bookshop. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you look on Amazon on my author page, you'll see all of them, all pretty, all pretty pictures, pretty faces. <laughs> on the covers and uh, yeah, so I think that's about it. Brilliant, thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having me on. <laughs>